Hi, it's so nice to see you all again today. We're going to talk about banking. What is banking? Banking is the business conducted by a bank. Think of it as the bank paying you a small percentage to trust them with your money. Why do you think we should use a credible financial institution to keep our money in? Credible financial institutions help keep your money safe and secure. Did you know that there is more than one kind of financial institution? There are banks and credit unions. Before we go into each one, let's take a look at a short video clip. I'm Dylan. And I'm Lindsay. And, and we're, we're Biz Kids. Wow. <laughs> we work at a gym. A bit slower today. We work at a motocross track. We um, count the laps there. And, and we, we raise pigs. <laughs> this is actually one of our jobs and we teach kids gymnastics and we profit off of it. Working with kids, having fun yourself while teaching them, it's a lot of fun. One. Three big casts? Two. Three. With the money I make from working here at NASA, I put it, most of it into my savings account. Okay, you're good to go. Thank you. I save the money with the credit union and there is a branch located in our high school, so it's really convenient and easy. We do a lot of transactions here. Most of them are deposits and withdrawals, some loan payments from the teachers. Right now, I have about $2,000 saved up in my account with the credit union. There's actually a girl here who saved over $4,000 in her account. I've saved about around $4,000 in my credit union account. How many adults can say that? People tell me that's a lot of money, but I'm determined to save more. I think for a lot of them, it's just saving, saving for college, saving for um, whatever they're gonna do down the road. It's important to save your money so you can have enough for when you actually need money, like if you want to save up for college or to buy a car. <laughs> Hi, I would like to make a withdrawal. I take money out of the credit union to buy a pig, and then I raise that pig, and later on I sell that pig and get about four times the amount of money that I bought it for, and so I profit off of it. If you don't have a savings account, then it's kind of harder to save your money, because most of the time you'll kind of go to your piggy bank and notice you have money and want to go shopping. It's really important that they realize that it's a safer spot for your money. It's not lying around at your house. You're not going to lose it. It's in an institution and it's federally insured. Having a savings account is kind of like doing gymnastics. You need to balance yourself. Why did they put their money into an account? Like I've said before, a credible financial institution has a lot of positives, but above all, it helps keep your money safe and secure. What kind of financial institution did they use in the video? If you caught on to the video, they mentioned banks and credit unions. Do you think that one is better than the other? One is no better than the other. When it comes to banking, it all ties back to your needs and wants. Different financial institutions suit different people's needs. What are a few banks and credit unions that you either know of or have heard about? Great job. So what's the difference between a bank and a credit union? The key differences are that banks are for-profit companies, whereas credit unions are non-profit companies. What this basically means is that banks are owned by shareholders and credit unions are owned by their members. There are privileges associated with each. For instance, if you don't like how your credit union is being run, you can always run for the board, become elected, and implement change. 
Whereas with a bank, you can't make those decisions unless you own a share in the bank and have been appointed to that position. Secondly, credit unions are exclusive. You have to be a part of a certain group to become a member of a credit union, such as a student or a firefighter, whereas banks accept almost anyone. However, both banks and credit unions insure up to $250,000 per account against loss. Do you think that banks and credit unions offer different types of accounts? Has anyone ever heard of checking and savings accounts? And what's the difference? Savings accounts are a way for you to PYF. What does that stand for again? Pay yourself first. Savings accounts are low risk, fixed amounts, meaning that it is a low return rate that is unchanging. However, I will later explain how storing your money in a savings account is still worth it. Checking accounts can be seen as your spending account. They also have low risk, fixed interest rates, but there are many perks to this account and there are many different types of checking accounts that can be personalized to suit your needs. The first set of perks is that a checking account allows for withdrawals, deposits, and transfers. What is a withdrawal? A withdrawal is when you take money out of an account. Now, what is a deposit? A deposit is when you put money into an account. What is a transfer? A transfer is when you move money between accounts. When you have a bank card with your checking account, it is called a debit card. This allows you to pay for things electronically. This card is linked to your checking account so that the money that is in your account is the money that you have on your debit card. Are there different kinds of savings and checking accounts? First, let's talk about savings. What is savings? Savings is a plan for your short, intermediate, and long-term goals. Do you save your money? If so, where? How do you save your money? Why do you save your money? And is your money safe? There are four different types of savings accounts that we will talk about. The first is the traditional savings account. A traditional savings account is just the basic savings account at a bank or a credit union. Second, we have money market accounts. A money market account is dependent on how the money market is doing. So if the market is doing well, so are you. However, this type of account has very low interest, so you will not lose or gain much money. Third, we have certificates of deposit. A certificate of deposit is more commonly known as a CD. It is also low risk and a low interest account. You must keep your money in the account for a certain length of time to avoid penalties, but the longer you leave it in the account, the more interest you will gain. And lastly, we have a U.S. savings bond. A U.S. savings bond is great because the government is actually paying you a small percentage for allowing them to borrow your money. There are also different types of checking accounts way more than we can list. Checking accounts are made to suit your needs. For example, if you're a student, you may be able to open up a student checking account. It all starts with earning interest. What is interest? Interest is a small percentage of money that is paid regularly at a particular rate. It all comes down to simple interest through the methods of credit or debit cards, online mobile banking, direct deposit, ATMs, check writing, and bank statements. 
What's the difference between a debit card and a credit card? A debit card is linked to your checking account and the money that you already have, whereas a credit card is like a small loan, which can be repaid with interest. There are also checks. Check writing is when you give a payment in the form of a check and it is taken out from your account. You could also use online mobile banking. This allows you to do all of your banking on a website operated by a credible financial institution. Now, what is an ATM? An automated teller machine, an ATM, allows you to make deposits and withdraw cash. Now, what are bank statements? A bank statement is a printed record of the balance in a bank account. It shows the amounts that have been paid into it and withdrawn from it. It is issued every month. Great, now let's break down how to calculate interest. When it comes to compound interest, it is a simple math equation. For example, let's imagine that it's your birthday and you receive $100. You decide to put that money in your piggy bank. Now, imagine you continue to receive $100 for the next 10 years on your birthday. You will have saved $1,000. Now, imagine the same scenario, but instead of storing your money in a piggy bank, you store your money in a savings account because you will gain interest in your savings account. And at the end of this, you will have $1,100. That's $100 more than you had when you just saved in your piggy bank. Now, maybe you have heard of some other financial institutions that give out loans that are not banks or credit unions. What are some other financial institutions that you know about? They refer to themselves as your community short-term lender and they have catchy slogans like don'tbebroke.com. Are payday loan companies or check cashing centers credible financial institutions? No. Why not? Although it may seem credible, when taking a closer look, payday loan companies can actually wreak havoc both financially and personally. So we've talked about banking. Now who knows about investing? What is investing? Investing is a plan to help you grow your money over time. How does saving your money relate to investing? To answer that question, let's take a look at the similarities and differences between saving and investing. Saving is not the same as investing. If you are setting aside money for three years or less, this should be looked at as saving. If you are setting aside money for three years or more, this should be looked at as an investment. Funds are almost always easier to access when it comes to savings, and your money is insured against loss. Whereas investing involves risk and reward and may not generate income over time. The final difference is that savings are almost always low risk, low return, whereas investments are riskier, but the higher the risk may involve a higher return rate. To demonstrate how investing works, do you think these items will be worth more or less 20 years from now? If you guess more, you're right. But why? Well, it has to do with inflation, meaning the value of money is rising and the same goes for investing. For example, in terms of investing, what is the better investment? $100 today or $100 a year from today? $100 today. Nice job. Much like banking, there are different types of investments. If you focus your attention to the pyramid, you'll see many different types of investments. The higher up the pyramid you go, the higher the risk, but the higher the reward. The base of the pyramid lists low risk investments and right smack dab in the middle, we have real estate, which was meant to be stable and way at the top, we have commodities, penny stocks and collectibles. What are commodities?
Commodities will never go away. These are both needs and wants, such as transportation. This is a risky investment because we are constantly trading at different prices. Now, what are penny stocks? Penny stocks are common stocks valued at less than $1, but there is a high risk of loss when you invest this money. What are collectibles? Collectibles are just things we like to collect like coins, stamps, or even paintings. But collectibles are a risky investment. Why? For example, let's say that you collect baseball cards and one day your favorite most expensive baseball card is torn by your little brother. Do you think it's worth the same amount after? No. This is why collectibles are so risky. You must keep them in the same condition they started out in. Now, what do you see all over the pyramid? Mutual funds. Since some are low on the pyramid and some are high on the pyramid, this means that some are low risk and others are high risk. Think of mutual funds as a huge umbrella that is being managed. Under this umbrella, there are different types of investments, some low, some high, but the diversity allows you to invest in both low or high risk investments. The money you receive from your investment is called a dividend and can be accessed as a lump sum over time. Well, I hope you feel as if your money is well on its way to being safe and secure.